Hello everyone, my name is Camille Gorand and this is a presentation over bioremediation by bacteria. What is bioremediation? Bioremediation is the process by which microorganisms are used to break down pollutants into non-toxic materials to reduce the pollution in the environment. Um, bioremediation uses a combination of fields such as biotechnology, microbiology, and environmental biology. Bioremediation has been the answer scientists came up with to solving the problem of water, soil, and air pollution due to human activities. There are two major types of bioremediation. The first type is bioaugmentation, which is the process of adding new microbial cells that are capable of degradation of a pollutant to the environment in order to reduce the pollution in that environment. The new cells being added can be wild type cells or more commonly they are genetically engineered to break down a certain type of pollutant. The second a major type of bioremediation is biostimulation, which is the process of adding nutrients to an environment in order to stimulate microbial growth that's already present in that environment. So the difference between bioaugmentation and biostimulation is that bioaugmentation is adding new cells to the environment, while biostimulation is just adding nutrients so cells already there can grow and break down the pollutants. Biostimulation is more commonly found and it is also much more cost-effective than bioaugmentation. Why are bacteria used for bioremediation? So bacteria have the ability to use many different chemical compounds as sources of energy. So bacteria use both organic compounds and or inorganic compounds for metabolic pathways to gain energy. So an example of organic compounds that are pollutants are hydrocarbons that are given off um, by burning fuels or just oil spills and stuff like that. And then um, examples of inorganic compounds that are pollutants are nitrates and sulfide or sulfates and heavy metals. And all of these can be broken down by bacteria. Bacteria also have the possibility of doing both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And this is important because that means um, Bacteria can be used to treat many different environments. They can be used to treat the ocean, which is a low oxygen environment, or they can be used to treat the air or the um, soil, which would be higher in oxygen. Some specific examples of bioremediation of soil by bacteria. Um, and scientists gathered soil samples from different areas in Nigeria um, where their soil was treated by a process called remediation by enhanced natural attenuation, which is the process of adding nutrients, moisture, and aer aeration to an environment to stimulate bacteria to, to degrade pollutants. So this is an example of biostimulation. So, um, the science gathered the soil samples from the different um, areas in Nigeria, and they did this pre-treatment, during treatment, and after treatment of RENA. And then one control sample was also taken. The hydrocarbon concentrations were measured in all of the samples, and the RENA-treated soil was shown to have lower levels of hydrocarbons, indicating that the bacteria were bra or were utilizing these hydrocarbons more in the arena treated soil, so they were getting rid of more pollutants. After treatment of the soil, though, gram negative bacteria bacteria were now the most prevalent in the population, and before there was an equal mixture of gram negative and gram positive. So this treatment indicates that there was a loss of biodiversity afterwards. Some examples of bioremediation of water by bacteria is bioremediation is used um, to treat the ocean to break down different plastic pollutants. 
So um, when plastic gets into the ocean, bacteria will form biofilms on the plastic. And some of the bacteria in the biofilms have the ability to degrade to degrade um, biodegradable plastic. So normal plastic um, cannot be degraded by bacteria because of its uh, high um, melting point or high molecular weight and its polymerization and its lack of favorable functional groups. But bacteria can degrade biodegradable plastic. So in one study, the genus Pseudomonas um, was found to be one of the cold water marine bacteria that were able to degrade plastics like PLC and PLA. So there are many problems that come with global pollution. So global pollution has caused global climate change, which has been which has proven to be detrimental detrimental to many habitats. Um, changes in the habitats caused by this climate change has been shown to eradicate species and it just harms them so much because they are not well equipped for their habitat anymore because it's either warming or it's cooling or something like that. Um, pollution of water and soil with heavy metals can cause multiple health concerns for humans. So heavy metals are extremely toxic, especially to children and can cause different brain problems and stuff like that. So it would be very bad for them to be found in our water. Reduction, you also see a reduction of biodiversity in the ocean due to oil and plastic pollution. And then there's also a reduction of farmlands, which reduces crop yield. And this is very, very bad because the human population still continues to increase. So as it increases, we are losing farmable land. So we won't have enough food for all of the people. So the importance of bioremediation is that bioremediation allows humans to utilize natural sources, bacteria or microorganisms to break down pollutants without causing more pollution. Bioremediation helps repair habitats um, that have been greatly impacted by the industrial revolution and um, global climate change. Bioremediation can also get rid of different toxic chemicals like heavy metals that may cause harm to humans or other animals. And then bioremediation also allows for soil to be remediated or fixed so farming can be done on it, which will help um, raise crop yields as the human population increases. These are my references I used for this presentation. Thank you.